What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 13 of the race here with Kingston Sprint FC and we're back here in MLS and today we're taking on a team that if we're being honest we don't have the best run against, we don't have the best form against them, we've, we've never beaten them. You can see Toronto FC, five previous meetings, five red little markers, five defeats. It is episode 13, I'm hoping it's not going to be unlucky and instead we are going to come away with a win. That's got to be the aim today. But as you may be able to see since the last episode, things, they've not really gone to plan. Of course, last time out, a 1-0 win against Orlando was a good little result really. But since then, six games, one win in those six games. Three draws as well, two defeats, but it's less than ideal. The two defeats we started off things with, you can see the first here against New England, a side who have had a little bit of a resurgence up the table. They do actually currently sit above us in MLS on the same amount of points and with the exact same form. So this was actually a really big game. New England really have found some form as of late. You can see, looking at the stats, we probably edged it in terms of kind of the total shots. If we look at the actual quality of the chances, it tells its own story. You can see here we created just one clear-cut chance. It was the one that we scored from. And it was Reynoso, actually, with the goal here. The 19-year-old player who has um, developed a little bit. I don't know how much I see him as an out-and-out -out striker, but it has been where we've kind of been experimenting with him. And he's done okay, you know. Two goals in seven appearances in MLS. Three on off the bench. And he got a useful goal for us here. Which I guess was a good kind of thing. But, well, ultimately the 2-1 defeat less than ideal. And, well, as you can see, Toronto in the next game. The team who, of course, were playing today, we lost to 2 one A game where we took an early lead through Julian Green. They scored two goals in quick succession either side of half time. Uh, Michael Bradley was sent off in the 61st minute. And, well, despite them having to play the last half an hour of this game with 10 men... We didn't break them down. We didn't make it happen. And Jermaine Anderson, you can see, he picked up a little bit of an injury, which was less than ideal. If we look at that injury, it was a calf strain. So nothing too serious, but, um, yeah, always a little bit of a concern with him because I feel like Anderson, he has he has the ability um, to be kind of our kind of captain for the next decade, really. 22 years old, you know, hopefully going to decide to play for Jamaica in the not-too-distant future. He's a great player, but well, he keeps getting these little injuries, and they are kind of a little bit problematic. Anyway, speaking of problems and stuff being problematic, you can see in our four kind of games following this, going into today's game against Toronto, only the one win, lots of draws here. The first against DC United, I probably would have taken, actually, at the start of this run of games, but with the two defeats in a row, we really needed a win, and unfortunately, we couldn't find one. You can see Reynoso getting another goal in this game. He got one in that New England match. Uh, all in all, it was a tight game against DC. You can see here lots of chances for us. We had two clear-cut chances, two half chances. They just had two half chances. On another day, I feel like we probably would have got all the spoils from this game. But, well, when your luck's out, it really is out. Fortunately, I guess you could say we did get a win here against Columbus. It was an early goal for Julian Green, which was the difference. And actually, it was Yasser Kasim, uh, the Iraqi international, getting the Man of the Match award. A player who, he looks very happy with himself in his photo. And he has every right to be, because he's been very good for us so far this year. 7.04 rating for him. Of course, a player released by Swindon Town. Not a player... Uh, or necessarily a team you'd associate with having players of a calibre to play for us. But Kasim has proved to be an exception, and, uh, well, it was a good little win there, really. I guess the silver lining in this run of games is that we've not st stopped scoring, and as you can see, we had two games back-to-back -back against the New York sides. The first against New York City FC. A 2-2 draw in the end, a tight game. Uh, I didn't make any changes in this game, because I actually thought we were going to kind of keep going in this game and get on top. But you can see, looking at the stats, we were largely on top in it, Neither team created any clear-cut chances. There were just a lot of half chances either way. Uh, and you can see in the end, actually, Sam McQueen, who grabbed a brace for New York City FC, did get the Man of the Match award. The next game we had against New York Red Bulls, this time away from home in New York. You can see 1-1 it finished. Peter Crouch with a goal in the 33rd minute. Julian Green with one 10 minutes prior. A game that we dominated, we bossed. But we didn't make it count. And while we conceded a few clear-cut chances, Peter Crouch took one of them. And, uh, well, the giant man himself was the difference maker. 37 years old. He's got six goals this season. He's not doing too badly as, at all, is he, Crouchy? Um, yeah, he's kind of found a little home in New York. And it would be fair to say he's been doing fairly well for them. I believe he got kind of Newcomer of the Year or some kind of player award at the end of last season for his performances. But anyway, Toronto, the team we have today, you can see we have had a little bit of a break since that last game against New York Red Bulls, which has been useful. In terms of the team, 
Um, no injuries to speak of, a little bit of kind of transfer dealings, however, uh, we decided to send Taichi WH out on loan. He's gone to Edmonton in Canada. I'm hoping this is going to help him develop. He is going to be playing kind of in the North American Soccer League, the second tier, the USL, and I'm hoping that he's going to play well for them. And hopefully come back a good little player. I kind of like this guy, of course. A player we got in the Super Draft. Last year he spent time on loan at Tampa. I guess the real issue for him is he's 22 and he's still kind of nowhere near his potential. Or at least the potential that my staff think he has. And uh, I don't think he's ever really going to reach it, unfortunately, for him. So we decided to loan him out because he was kicking up a fuss about lack, uh, kind of a lack of first team football. And due to the fact we have been sticking with the narrower system... I've not really been able to give him the football that he wanted. But we have made one new addition, and it was this guy, Andrew Christian. Uh, an interesting player, a player who you can see Montreal Impact picked up from New Bowens uh, in Jamaica. When I set up the game, I did set it so that all the clubs in Jamaica had players generated for them if they didn't have enough players for their starting eleven. Uh, this guy was a player who was generated, who, well, caught the eye of Montreal Impact. You can see, played 20 games last season. This year, five games, a 7.25 average rating, but he was put on the waivers and waved away. And, uh, well, we picked him up on a freed little deal, and you can see he's got a nice little deal. It expires at the end of the year. He's on the kind of minimum wage for a player in this division, but a good Jamaican talent. Obviously useful that he can play centre attack in mid. And he just gives us a little bit of kind of backup, I guess, that we have been lacking, perhaps, in the centre mid department. But anyway, going into today's game, I want to beat Toronto. Of course, we did beat them 2-1 in the playoffs. That doesn't count for anything, though, because we lost on aggregate. So the game still sees that as a loss. But I'm hoping we can take a little bit of that into this game. So I want to get some revenge on them, not only for the defeat that we had 2-1 against them just a few game weeks ago, but also for them knocking us out of the playoffs. In terms of the team that we're going to go with, it's going to be pretty much the strongest start in 11 I have. It's going to be Andre Blake in goal. At left back, we of course go with Kamar Lawrence. At right back, the Rabona Maestro. He's going to live off this forever, O'Neill Fisher. I'm forever going to think of this guy as the Rabona Maestro. Anyway, in these centre-back positions, we are going to go with Apara and McCarthy, two players who have been in pretty good form as of late, it'd be fair to say. Across the centre of the midfield, we're going to go with Yasaka Sim, playing deep-line playmaker. Out on the left-hand side in the centre attack in mid-roll, we're going to go with Jermaine Anderson. To his right, Daniel Johnson, a player who has been out with an injury with a sports hernia, kind of getting back to full fitness now, which is great to see. Obviously, 25 years old, a player with a, a bright future ahead of him, I think. And while speaking of players ahead of them with bright futures, Kaizuki Honda, he may be 31, but he's having a fantastic season for us. He's perhaps had a, his performances peter off as of late, but the 31-year-old really has proven to be kind of a valuable asset to our team, and I'm hoping that in this kind of big game, he can be a difference maker for us today. In the striker positions, we're going to stick with Julian Green and Andre Clennon, two players who have kind of found themselves really as our first-choice strikers for the last year now. Going back to when Julian Green first came to the club, um, we've got options though. You can see on the bench we've got Austin Reynoso, a player who I talked about for having a bit of an impact. He's only 19, a new player to the side. Has been performing very well indeed. We've got a few other options as well. However, you can see we've got Decoy Williams and also Corey Bins kind of as options on the bench. Bins playing a fairly kind of frequent amount of football on off the bench. Jermaine Taylor, of course, who was a player who was a, a key asset in our first team at 33 years old, really has just found himself fizzling out of the first team. But with his contract expiring at the end of the year, um, it's you know kind of in my interest, I guess, to slowly phase him out. And that is certainly something that we've been doing this year. Anyway, other players we've got, we've got Kevin Hunt on the bench, the 18-year-old, the a player who's been playing very, very frequently for us. You can see eight starts in MLS, four on off the bench as well when it comes to appearances. Uh, we also have Fernando Gomez, the new Brazilian, very talented central midfielder, a player who's not played a whole lot of football for us just yet, but at 24, you know, he's got time to develop, he's got time to find his place in the first team, and a player who I have some faith in for us to trust, you know, if we need to kind of bring on a player in that deeper midfielder role. Ricardo Morris, obviously a great little attacking midfielder option and we also have Kalen Hines rounding off the subs of course a player who joined us on loan from Sheffield Wednesday not played a whole lot for us yet but did score fairly recently to kind of get off the mark for us in MLS so that's a good kind of sign for him so anyway, let's get into today's game. I'm going to submit this squad. I'm pretty happy with our team all in all. We have been very fortunate so far this season in the sense that really we've only had a few injuries to contend with and they've been in the centre of the midfield, which is perhaps the area of the pitch where we do have the most talent. Um, when it comes to strikers, obviously, Reynoso's played well. Kalen Hines has done well. You may be wondering what's happened to the likes of Otty and also Jason Johnson, of course, strikers who were key last year for us. They're still in the squad. They're just... 
I guess not finding a spot in the team mostly because I've got younger players who I want to develop or I've got better players uh, than them who can start in that striker position. I'm kind of looking at Kalen Hines as an example of a player who, yes, he's on the bench for us, of course, in on loan, um, but he is just leaps and bounds really ahead of Jason Johnson and our other striking options. And while speaking of striking options, Toronto have a few, including Giovinco, who has just hit the post as I ramble away. Let's concentrate on the game here. It's Johnson kicking it to Johnson. Johnsonception on the pitch right there. Uh, but yeah, that was a good little clearance in the end by Danny Johnson for us. Getting it away to safety. And uh, well, that is perhaps a warning shot that's flown our way from Giovinco's uh, right foot. It hit the near post. I think the keeper may have had it covered. But well, it hits the woodwork again. Was that Giovinco again? I think it was. I mean, we scrambled it away to safety. We've had a few warning shots against us. And, uh, well, we need to try and book up our ideas here. Well, Johnson strained a neck. I feel like the Johnsons have just been doing everything so far on the pitch, along with Giovinco. Maybe someone else can step up to the plate. Maybe Kaizuki Honda. You know, this is a big game for us. Have an impact. Anderson here passes it across to Danny Johnson, who hits it. I mean, he scored a few of these in his time. He scored one in the playoffs last year from range. He's just got another one for us. And I said it was the Johnsons doing everything. It's Danny Johnson this time. Jermaine Anderson, nice little intelligent ball across the 18-yard box. Kind of surprised that pass was left open, really. But Danny Johnson took that finish very, very nicely indeed. And we get our noses ahead in this game. Toronto, they've probably been the better side. Kamal Lawrence, you can see to Anderson here. That ball across the 18-yard box. And Danny Johnson on that left peg of his. First time, bang. Maybe the keeper should do better, but it's in the corner. It's a nice little finish. And it does see us take the lead in this game against Toronto. Could we do the unthinkable? Could we actually beat Toronto after a horrific run of form? Just one win in those last kind of six games. We need to turn it around, and this is the kind of game that would be ideal to do it in. Anyway, you can see here, Yasser Kasim on a booking. That does concern me slightly. We're going to make some changes. Jermaine Anderson is going to go to deep line playmaker. Danny Johnson is going to go to the central attack in mid. And we're going to take off Yasser Kasim. And I think we're going to bring in, um, actually, Kevin Hunt, the Trinidad and Tobago youngster. We're going to give him the nod, a player who I really do trust to come up big for us. And hopefully, well, uh, he can come up big for us here. You know, we're one goal to the good. We need a little bit more defensive solid solidity in the side and Kevin Hunt a player who is very very good defensively indeed so hopefully he can kind of shur things up for us we've got a set piece Kaizuki Honda whips it in a par and it down Danny Johnson once more it's a lovely little set piece it's two goals for the man himself it's his fourth goal of the season he's doubled his tally for the season in this one game and well what a game to do it in the ball I think it was nodded down by a par a Honda Whipping it in, Apara leaps above, nods it down, and Danny Johnson, half volley, scissor kick, bang. Pick that out. Lovely finish. And, uh, well, we, we're in dreamland right now. 2 0 up against Toronto. And uh, Danny Johnson, two massive goals for us, although we can't get too carried away yet. Giovinco, edge of the box. Julian Green wins it, though. Could we hit them on the counter? And Neil Fisher, big ball up to Apara. What is the centre back doing there? I don't know. Oh, if he'd finished it, I would have lost my mind. What is Apara doing in a one-on-one? -on -one? Answers on a postcard. Let me know. He saw space ahead of him, and he just marauded into it, the centre-back. He didn't know what he was doing. Kind of a little bit disappointed he didn't pass it, because there was, I think, Danny Johnson on for a hat-trick running on alongside him. Um, but, uh, well, I can't really fault our performance so far. That is the, the biggest complaint I have so far, that Ike Apara one-on-one miss, and... Well, when that's your biggest complaint, you've not got a lot to worry about. I'm going to take off Andre Clennon here. We're going to bring in, uh, I think we'll bring in Reynoso, the youngster. Give him a little bit of game time. Uh, you can see, though, looking at the whole team, it's just been a very, very good team performance. I'm also going to take off Kaizuki Honda. We'll bring on Kalen Hines for him. Just get some fresh legs on. I'm a little bit concerned about Jermaine Anderson and Danny Johnson. And I guess our team as a whole, the fitness is kind of wavering just a little bit, but... It looks like it's not going to be a concern for us here. We have put in a great performance. And finally, we're actually going to register a win against Toronto. Something that, well, I know we did it in the playoffs, but we lost on aggregates. The game sees it as a loss. So this is the first time there will be green alongside our name against Toronto. And, well, I am happy about that. This has been a very, very good performance indeed. We've had slightly more clear-cut chances than Toronto. The game, you know, Toronto came flying out of the traps. Perhaps if Giovinco scores either of the two chances that came his way, it's a very, very different result. But the bottom line is Danny Johnson, our central midfielder, 
has just put in a massive performance for us. What a player this guy is. 25 years old, hopefully a player who uh, is going to be around here at the sprint for many, many years to come. And, uh, well, that sees us, as you can see now, go top because New England lost 4-1 to FC Dallas. So, suddenly... We look like we're in a good little position. You can see DC United and Toronto with games in hand on us. But we do have a little bit of a margin over them, even if they are to win their games. So it's a good way to bounce back after a bad run of form. And now we need to get some good results. You can see Montreal Impact in 17th, struggling. Rail Salt Lake in 15th. Sports in Kansas in 3rd are going to be tricky, certainly. But there's definitely a fair few winnable games coming up. And, uh, well, in terms of when we'll be back, I'm not sure. It might be for the New England game. It might be a little bit sooner, maybe for the Columbus game. Uh, we have got the summer break coming up. In fact, it doesn't even look like there is a summer break. There's a there's a mini one. We've got one now, actually. Um, I guess there's not one this year. Why wouldn't there be one this year? I feel like there, there is going to be one, actually, and it's going to be decided by how many players we have called on international duty. So the fixtures, they are going to be a little bit spaced out, I imagine. Maybe we could look to strengthen the side slightly, although, if I'm being honest, I'm pretty happy with the overall balance of the team. Before we go, I do want to just give a little update. I mentioned in the first episode of this year about the allocation funds bug. Uh, you can see here, actually, the general allocation money, it stopped going up. It's just hit the limit, I guess, of £37 million, which is good in some ways, um, but it does mean that I can't lower player salary cap impacts unless... Uh, they're over a certain amount. I think Danny Johnson, actually, who's earning $400,000, is the only player whose cap salary cap impact I could actually reduce, even if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, just a little update on that bug. I'm still trying to look into how to fix it for the sakes of the database and making it public, because it'd be something nice to get fixed, so you guys don't have the same problem. Um, so kind of keep an eye out for that, I guess. But anyway, guys, I guess with that result, we've now gone five games unbeaten, which sounds a lot better than one win in our last six. But we need to start kicking on now. We need to try and get some more good results. You can see 15 games played this season, so we're just shy of the halfway point. We're in a great position, although looking at the league as a whole, it's very, very competitive indeed. You can see FC Dallas in the Western Conference really making a name for themselves, as are Sporting Kansas, two teams who we're not all that familiar with in reality, but two teams very much on the rise and teams we're going to have to be certainly wary of going forward but anyway guys that is going to wrap up everything from me if you have enjoyed today's episode as always please do leave a like on the video if you've got any comments leave them down below and other than that it is me jack and i will talk to you guys in a bit i'm out, and you jerk it out.